All right, we are back with another Drive Across 65, uh, Season 1, Episode 3. Uh, if you're listening to the first two episodes, we wrapped up with the AFC. I took the no longer Oakland Raiders uh, and sprinkled in the no longer Urban Jaguars. Uh, my partner Pete here took the chalky uh, Buffalo Bills, uh, which I fully support. There's nothing wrong with taking them. Uh, like he said, they are the best team up and down uh, the 53-man roster. They look the best. Uh, we're going to drop some AFC news that has come out since the last time that we recorded, and we'll dive into the NFC. Uh, first of all, Pete, how you doing, man? How's your week? Yeah, doing pretty good. It's uh, still hot as Hades out here in uh, Midwest July, but still alive, still kicking. Got AC, got a fan. Can't ask for home with more than that. So uh, I need to correct something that you said last week also. Um, you had said that it was hot in the Midwest. Pete, we are definitely in the South. Kentucky is in the South. I don't know what you're talking about. I know we're not giving geography lessons here because I did mention that the Bills were west of the Mississippi most of their life, and uh, I got proven very wrong there. Uh, but Kentucky, I'm for sure, is in the South. Yeah, very much on the Ohio River. You could split it both ways. All right, so uh, AFC news since our last pod. Do uh, you want the good news or the bad news? Always the bad news first. The bad news. So this is bad news for Pete and Pete alone. So uh, – the Browns picked up Josh Rosen, um, which gives us a little insight to how the NFL is probably going to treat the uh, Deshaun Watson situation. And they released a team total. Now, I believe you said it was going to be between six or seven? Six or seven with a lean towards six. Okay. Uh, having this information now, do you want to change your answer? I do not. Okay. So their team total is now listed at zero wins, and I feel comfortable taking the under. <laughs> they might still hit the under. If anybody could, it would be the Browns. Uh, no, so their, their team total has not come out yet. But um, I thought that would be funny just to keep you on your toes a little bit and see see how you would react to a zero win total. Keeping me on my toes makes me taller, so I always appreciate <laughs> that. All right, so um, the other news coming out of the AFC, we're going to stay in the state of Ohio. Uh, the Bengals released their alternate whites, and they are sick. You wouldn't have thought so. Bengals, orange, black, it just makes a lot of sense. But those helmets are pretty sweet. I love them. I think that added another uh, win to their team total. Uh, <laughs> They're going to scare think, scare them out into oblivion, huh? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a swag effect, man. You know what I mean? That team is swagging out, especially with the uniforms. They are sick. Um, and some other teams revealed some uniforms. We'll talk about that later on. Uh, any other news you got, Pete? No, nothing off the top of my head. It's just kind of quiet as training camp begins. We'll get some news on uh, injuries and trades and whatnot coming up soon, I'm sure. But we're still in that quiet period right now. Right on. So we're going to dive into the NFC then. And uh, so Pete made his Little Caesars reference, uh, I believe, in episode one. I have a, uh, a food analogy for myself. Um, so I was looking at the NFC. You look at them up and down. They remind me of Chick-fil-A sauce. And let me explain. Well, not just the sauce, the condiments that you can get from Chick-fil-A. Let me explain. So you have, obviously, um, the Packers. Uh, they're always in the conversation, top-tier team. They have had two back-to-back uh, -back stud quarterbacks, Hall of Famers. Um, you got uh, the Bucks, who are good now. I mean, they, they were good, I guess, 30 years ago or something, and they came back around. They're good again. Um, they, you, you got Cowboys and the Niners who have always been traditionally good, um, insane fan bases, probably the craziest fan bases. Uh, you have, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if he was going to change yourself there or not. I mean, I'm crazy. It has nothing to do with being a 49er fan though. Uh, you got the Vikings and the Eagles who are always in the conversation. I went to, uh, the opening week game Vikings, uh, Bengals last year and the skull champ broke out, which... I mean, skull, yeah, skull, yeah, skull. Mm. It's such an awesome. I mean, I wouldn't even like cheer for the Vikings, and I got into it. It was awesome. Uh, you got the Cardinals; they keep improving. Uh, uh, Murray just got his contract, so I guess he's posting all his pictures back on Instagram now. <laughs> and then, obviously, you got the Super Bowl defending champion Rams. You know what I mean? That, so, what I'm saying is, when you go to Chick Fil A, you can get your traditional ranch barbecue sauce, honey mustard. Uh, you can get the the new age Chick Fil A sauce. You can get the honey roasted barbecue. You can get a little tropical with it. Get the Polynesian sauce. And everybody has their favorites, and everybody has a good reason for it. And I feel like it's the same with the NFC. We're gonna kick it off with the NFC East. We're gonna start with the Cowboys. Um, 
probably the biggest, but it's got to be the biggest fan base in the NFL, right? It would have to be. Just, I mean, they're called America's team. Whether it's true or not, they got the demonicers. So, so uh, we're gonna, we're gonna lead off with you dropping some facts about the NFC East that I was not a believer in, but you convinced me. Tell me about the the tradition of the NFC East. Well, first and foremost, I have to point out that that entire analogy was downright Shakespearean. I mean, uh, <laughs> we are we are such a sophisticated show here. I mean, we. Uh, I mean, for real, that was actually a very spot on analogy. All those flavors. Um, it's kind of like two people not being able to agree on the same two toppings for a pizza. Uh, everyone has their reasons. Everybody agrees that pineapple does not go, though. That would seem to be the prevailing wisdom. But the NFC East, uh, so it, its current constitution came about in 2002 when the NFL expanded to 32 teams and every division went to four teams. And at that time, the Philadelphia Eagles were running the roost. They had been to the NFC Championship game in 2001. They went again in 2002 and 2003, 2004, where they finally broke through, made the Super Bowl. And ever since then, any team that has won the division has failed to win it the next year. There has been not, there have not been a repeat division. A re, a, <laughs> English is hard. A repeat winner in this division, good for me, since uh, 2004. And I, I heard that stat, and I was like, that is not uh, – it's a meaningless variable to me. That's not something that I, – I felt like it was something where um, the play-by-play, -play, the broadcast comes on, and you hear them say the Broncos haven't beat the Bengals on Thursday night since 1965. <clears throat> and I'm like, why, why does that matter? It's over the past 50 years. But when you made your point over the uh, division being – such a wild card every year and the teams being so up and down and the variance changing every year. The fact that there hasn't been a repeat winner in the last 20 years, you made it make a lot of sense to me. I don't know if that happens this year because the Cowboys still look stacked. We're going to dive into them right now if you are ready. I am ready. And uh, the point you made about having won since blah, blah, blah. Yes, that's all true. This has been a continuous year to year thing that is, of course, ongoing unless it gets snapped this season, of course. It matters not so much what happened in 2004, but the fact that it happened in 2019, and 2020, and 2021. So that doesn't automatically mean, of course, that we're off the Cowboys, but it gives us pause. It gives us a chance to look at the other teams as well. All right, so uh, to kick it off, uh, the defending uh, division champions, the uh, Dallas Cowboys, uh, so they're still returning Diggs and Parsons on defense. Uh, they obviously have lost uh, Amari Cooper to the Browns, who have a zero uh, total, and <laughs> their team their team total is still zero <laughs> uh, as of right now. Uh, they still have CD Lamb. They still have Gallup. Um, me and you are, I think we both agree that neither one of us are very high on uh, Zeke. Uh, take it away, Pete. So all that we just said. Uh, just because there hasn't been a repeat winner, there won't be another one. I, I don't think there'll be a repeat winner in the NFC East this year. I think Dallas, um, they had a great year last year, don't get me wrong. I think there was some overachieving in there. One of the main reasons they were so successful last season was their ability to take the ball away. And uh, Trevon Diggs, of course, was the key catalyst to all that. He had 11 interceptions. That said, his cornerback play wasn't exactly stellar. And he might improve on that, of course, but the idea of being able to take the ball away at that kind of rate isn't really sustainable year to year. He might have a better year this year and not sniff for a Steam All Pro. He might be better in coverage, but he won't have nearly the interceptions. Now, Dallas, they do bring back some talent, but they've lost some players. You mentioned Amari Cooper. They've lost maybe their best edge rusher in Randy Gregory. They lost the safety in Xavier Woods. They lost an offensive lineman in Lyle Collins. These aren't top-of-the-mind type names. They still have Dak. They still have what has the makings of a good offensive line, maybe not as good as it has been in the last couple, two or three years. But their schedule is also going to get harder. I think the division outside of the Giants, spoiler alert, is improved. <laughs> And um, 10.5 does not sound feasible to me. I see them dropping back into the pack as more of a 500 team this year. 
Very, very, very hot take. So, uh, like you mentioned, the team total is at 10.5. It's a very, very juicy over at minus 134. Uh, you can get the under 10.5 at even money, and you are encouraging to uh, take the even money and run. Huh? Absolutely. And I do want to say that I think Michael Parsons is an absolute stud. If I had a vote last season for NFL MVP, I'm voting for Micah Parsons, not Defensive Rookie of the Year, not just Defensive Player of the Year, NFL MVP. He was that good. I don't see any reason for him to digress this year. So outside of him, I just see the Cowboys team is not living up to the usual expectations put on them because of the Cowboys and because they play primetime every single week. And because Troy Aikman used to do their games, and now Tony Romo might do their games. It's just Dallas Cowboys everywhere, and the hype usually doesn't match. That's not to say they can't be good, but this season, I do see them falling under their win total. I'm glad we uh, we did not open up with an over, and we didn't open up with the chalk. It makes me feel so much better. No, we started with Buffalo last time, but I just have those butterflies in my stomach over Buffalo <laughs> as a team. I'm not a Buffalo Bills fan by any means. But I just, I, I truly believe, and you've heard me say this, for the last two seasons, they could have easily won the Super Bowl either of those seasons and just didn't work out for them. So taking the over on them was easy. Uh, for me, anyway. For Dallas, kind of in the reverse way, I think taking the under is kind of easy. Uh, I'm backing you on that. So I had them right at around 10 uh, with a weird loss uh, coming in late against one of the Division rivals, maybe they'll split the series there. Uh, I fully back the under 10 for even money. Um, with that being said, we are going to move over to the city of brotherly love. We're going to go uh, Philadelphia Eagles uh, with their new addition of uh, A.J. Brown. Um, tell me about their draft, Pete. What do you know? Well, they drafted Jordan Davis in the first round, and he was the quite – literally the centerpiece of that Georgia defense um, that dominated college football last season and led them to a national championship. The good thing about that pick is he is not expected to come in immediately and be even a starter, but the Eagles love to rotate their defensive line. And you're bringing in a fresh 330 pound dancing bear in there that he looks like he's about 14 years old, but he is a killer. And that will cause havoc in the NFC East backfields. And I like the Eagles this season. Uh, so in another interesting fact, uh, before we dive into their schedule, they have that, uh, that double header uh, in week two. So we didn't really talk about that much coming out of the AFC. Uh, week two, there's going to be a couple double headers, uh, one featuring the Eagles. Uh, be fun. Uh, six o'clock game, they'll be playing against uh, the Vikings. Um, then it'll be, uh, is it the, the Bills and the, I can't remember, we'll have to look at the, the other AFC matchup for the doubleheader. It'll be fun though, the doubleheader week two is a little off the cuff. Usually it's uh, week one, correct? Has it been the past week one? On the Monday Night Football, it's yeah. been week one. I'm yeah. not sure why the NFL made the decision to switch to week two this season, but hey, cool. Um, so their, their team total is set at nine and a half, um, over under, so we get the over is minus one thirty four. Uh, you can get the under one ten. Uh, sell me on taking the over, taking the under. Beat. All right. So with the Eagles, obviously they made a big pickup this season uh, on draft day. They made a trade for AJ Brown. If you look at AJ Brown's numbers last season, they don't look anything spectacular. The man was hurt. The offense around him kind of crumbled a little bit. As far as physical talent goes, you're not going to find too much more talented than A.J. Brown. Wide receiver was an area of weakness for the Eagles last season, and that is as big an upgrade as you can ask for. Now, let me say something about the Eagles. And if I tell you right now, if I ask you this question rhetorically, who is the most important player in the NFL this season? You might have a lot of guesses who I might think that might be. But if I told you the most important player on the, in the NFL this season played for the Eagles, you might know I'm coming at you with Jalen Hurts. I've mentioned this before, and this has just been a long, long time philosophy of mine. The quarterback is maybe the most important position on the field, but he doesn't make or break a team. That said, there are exceptions to every rule, and I think Jalen Hurts has the ability to either make or break this team. 
they have a very strong roster. They have a motivated young head coach who was able to get the team into the playoffs in his first season when nobody saw it coming. There's also a parallel to the uh, Super Bowl winning Eagles team. In August of that year, they had an area of weakness at cornerback, and they swung a trade and brought in Ronald Darby. Is Ronald Darby a first-team All-Pro type player? No, but he's very good, and he was able to solidify that defense, and they went on and won a Super Bowl that year. This season, kind of have a little bit of a weakness at cornerback, and they didn't wait all the way till August, but they swung a trade for a cornerback, James Bradbury, probably a similar level to Ronald Darby in the first place. Not a first-team All-Pro, but can solidify that defensive backfield. Now we have to ask ourselves, what's Jalen Hurts going to do this season? Is he capable? We've seen it in college. We've seen it in the NFL. But if he can live by the first do no harm mantra, if he can go out there and keep the ball with the offense, not turn it over, make an occasional play here or there, then I can see, as a dark horse candidate, the Philadelphia Eagles in the Super Bowl. So, um, not to get ahead of the rest of the division, but the Eagles are plus 180 to win the NFC East. Obviously, if you've seen them win the Super Bowl, that's going to be your pick to win the uh, NFC? Win the, N- win the NFC East, for sure. Uh, over 9.5 wins, for sure. Gotcha, gotcha. Hey, so a lot of fact check because um, I, knew I, was, I knew it was the Bills, and I didn't want to say the wrong team that they were playing. The, the Week 2 uh, doubleheader Monday night, We'll get 7-15 game is the Titans and the Bills. And then the 8-30 game is going to be the Vikings and the Eagles. Uh, that'll be fun, man. It's just, you know, you'll you'll ease into the first week and you'll be excited. And then, boom, out of nowhere, you'll get the doubleheader on Monday night. And you'll just have all kinds of football Monday night. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, it should be fun. All right, so uh, you're taking the over 9.5. You're going to pay the 134, uh, pay the juice on the Eagles to uh, – to beat their team total? Yeah, I would try to pair that or at least make a separate wager for them winning the, uh, winning the division so you're not falling too far behind on your units. Gotcha, gotcha. I, I like it too. Um, I like Nick Sirianni. Did I pronounce that right? Nick Sirianni. Look at me. He's I'm Italian, like man. three for three on pronunciations. <laughs> uh, I'm killing it right now. So uh, I, I'm a back you on that. I like the over. Um, minus 134, nine wins. Uh, the MCEs, like you said, is just – a crapshoot, uh, and if I'm going to back a team, it's going to be uh, the Eagles. I love them. I love them, love them, love them. All right, so uh, we're going to move to, and if you don't mind, Pete, I just need to get this off my chest for a second. We're going to move to Washington, and I'm just going to go off. And if you just relax and uh, let me tell the people how I feel. Go right. for it. So the Washington Commanders, all right? Now, we talked about how there's no on-field tanking, but the front office can set you up for failure, right? Absolutely. So let's say the uh, upper management is the head of the snake, okay? So you have Dan Snyder is on an absolute crash course right now, okay? And hopefully he doesn't land on that field because it's having enough problems. That just is. <laughs> pipes leaking on fans. Uh, the, the walls falling around. Poor Jalen Hurts. Uh, hopefully he doesn't get uh, hurt this season from playing in Washington because uh, the, we're going to need him for our prop. Um, you got Ron Rivera. I'm not going to say anything bad about Ron Rivera. Uh, the dude just beat cancer. Um, his nickname is Riverboat Ron or a gambling podcast. Yes, we are. Any any anybody who has the nickname Riverboat, fine by me. Uh, not a political podcast. We got Jack Del Rio firing away uh, tweets from the sideline. We're not going to talk about politics. But what are you doing, bro? The mascot. Their nickname now is the Commies. No politics. We're not going to talk about politics. <laughs> but their nickname now is the Commies. Uh, you got Carson Wentz on his uh, third stop in three years. Going to have to learn the staff and the coaching system again. Uh, their poor mascot is on his third helmet in four years. <laughs> and those are just the positive things I can say about Washington right now. I mean, it is a disaster. Everybody talks about the Houston Texans being the, the bottom of the barrel as far as the NFL goes. I disagree. I think it's Washington. They are they are in a bind right now. Um, all jokes aside, they do have Ron Rivera, a ton of experience. They do have Carson Wentz, a ton of experience. And... They do have Chase Young coming back, 
who is, uh, by all means, a generational talent. He's an absolute stud. Pete, what do you got for me with the Washington? I'm going to say it right. Watch this. The Washington Commanders. I'm going to do my best to say Commanders every time. Uh, when you, Well, you know, if you have a childhood friend who decides he wants to go by a different name, you're going to call him by the original name sometimes. And I've been watching football for pushing near... Well, I don't want to say how long, because I don't want to know how long. <laughs> I don't want you to know how exactly how old I am. You know you're 76. Yeah, old. I'm 70. I look good for 76. <laughs> I've been watching football for a very long time, and I've known them by one name. But one difference, and I can't really disagree with about just about anything you said there. The one major difference between the Commanders and the Texans is the level of actual talent on the field. And Washington still has a bunch of talent, especially on the defensive side. It's not just Chase Young. That entire offensive line is first-round pick, first-round pick, first-round pick. And we saw the 49ers parlay that into a Super Bowl appearance. Not predicting Washington to make a Super Bowl appearance, but I think their defense is going to be good this year. Um, I'm not a, I've said this before. I'm not a big Carson Wentz apologist, but I don't think he deserves all the hate that he gets. He's going to have a couple stinkers now and then, Unfortunate for him, those two stinkers last season came in the last two games of the year. I think with a coach like Ron Rivera, he will be able to control his more basic instincts and not go off script too often. They have a decent running game. Antonio Gibson um, is supposed to be in the best shape of his life. I just happened to be uh, reading about him the other day, him being on my dynasty football team. And uh, they've got someone like J.D. McKissick coming out of the backfield who can carry the ball, but is much more adept at catching the ball. And that's going to be Carson Wentz's best friend. All right, so their their team total is set seven and a half, okay? I'm going to cut you off right there. I'm going to give you a list of their first seven games, and I want you to find me a win, okay? Jags, Lions, Eagles, Cowboys, Titans, Bears, Packers. Find me one. Okay. Home against. If you say the Jags, we're cutting the microphone off right now, and I'm going home. So home against Jaguars will table for now. <laughs> <laughs> at Detroit, at Detroit, um, but we like the Lions. We like the Lions this year. I could see that uh, as a loss, and then the Eagles game as a loss. Dallas, it's in Dallas, but give me the win on that one. Give me the win at home against Tex uh, the Texans. Titans. Titans, pardon me. Yeah, it's not poor pinch shit. Not. <laughs> I'm, I'm still good with that being a win. Uh, at Chicago, give me that a win, and then home against uh, Green Bay would be, I would say, a loss. So that has them at three and three, not counting the Jags game. Three and four, sure. All right. So um, obviously, I, I I roasted Washington coming into it because I just everything they have going on is absolutely hilarious. Uh, their team total is set at seven and a half. Uh, you're looking at paying uh, one twenty five for the over. Getting close to even money on the under uh, seven and a half feet. What do you got? And a bit of a spoiler, I really don't like the Giants this year. So I'm giving them two wins right there. I think they at least split with Dallas. And I think even though I like Philadelphia, I'm not picking them to go 17 and 0 or anything. So I could see a split there. Four wins potentially within the division, but a solid three. Only it begs for five more outside the division. They're. Schedule is decent. They actually have a stronger schedule than you might expect for a team that wasn't a division champion the year before. But I actually like Washington to finish second in the division. And if they do that, eight or nine wins sounds right to me. Over. Over, paying the 125 for the Washington. Watch me say it correctly. The Washington Commanders. Commanders. Yeah. I'm not sure what they're commanding, but <laughs> here we go. So that leaves us with the New York Giants. Um, so they picked up uh, – is it Tyrod or Tyrod? I know I, I know he corrected some pronunciation before, and I won't get that wrong. I'm actually not sure. I always said Tyrod, but I've heard Tyrod as well. Okay, so we're going to go with Tyrod because it sounds cooler. Yeah. Uh, so they picked up Tyrod Taylor. I think obviously he'll end up starting at some point over Daniel Jones. And what a, what a tough career that guy's had, man. Um, he, he was hurt in, um, what were they, L.A. or San Diego State? They got out of the Chargers. Uh, that was, 
That was, that was, <laughs> it was hard, it was isn't it? it was, okay. He, so, he changed his teams quite a lot. Yeah. So he got he got his his lung punctured getting a uh, a painkiller right in that which promoted uh, Herbert and her, Herbert ended up turning into a stud. Um, then he gets hurt down in Texans when he's doing in Houston when he's doing well. Like he's he's leading the team like he should be um, with his, with the, where they're at. Davis Mills ends up taking over. He ends up on the Giants. I believe that uh, he'll eventually take over Daniel Jones. Right? It'll be a nice role reversal for him. He's also handed off the reins to Josh Allen and Baker Mayfield. Um, <laughs> he has been your ultimate bridge quarterback in the NFL recently, and I do think either through poor play or injury that yes, Tyrod will uh, eventually be starting games with the Giants this year. So, um, so just honorable mentions on the Giants. Obviously, you got uh, Saquon Barkley. Uh, he's a big name. Uh, he's only had 627 uh, total rushing yards and three touchdowns in the past two years. He's high on everybody's draft board, and everybody ends up uh, throwing the charts away whenever he starts playing because he, he never gets to stay on the field. Uh, they're a young team. They got uh, Brian Dable as a coach now, former OC over at uh, Buffalo, right? Yes. And their biggest pickup, uh, and I'm going to uh, stand on this hill by myself if I have to, Robinson out of Kentucky, Wendell Robinson out of Kentucky, a uh, stud. Um, I love that kid. Obviously, I'm a Kentucky fan, so I'm going to be a little biased. That was a big pickup for him, I believe. That was a good second-round pick for them. I don't know how much contributions he can make this season. Um Going from Kentucky to the NFL, I'm not saying that it's a bad school by any means. They obviously play in the best conference, but the, it's not really a pro style offense. Uh, I will not be taking uh, any Kentucky slider on this. <laughs> Kentucky's going to be a good team this season. They were a good team last season too, but I think Robinson will take a year to adjust to the NFL. They still have some decent depth in front of him too, so they can bring him along slowly. So we got uh, you. You said uh, when we were breaking down the uh, Commanders. Um, that you weren't very high on the Giants. We have them at seven and a half. Uh, taking the unders and cost you uh, one fifty five. Uh, you're getting a little plus money at one twenty seven on the over. What do you got? Yeah, I really do want to take the over based on that juice, but really can't do it. Speaking of Giants draft picks, honestly, I think as far as uh, first round picks go, the Giants had the best draft in the league. They picked up my two favorite players in the entire draft at picks five and seven. They picked up Kayvon Thibodeau. Thibodeau? Thibodeau? <laughs> I don't think it's Thibodeau. Thibodeau out of Oregon. And uh, Evan Neal, who I thought was the best lineman in the entire draft out of Alabama. They're not going to help them win this season. I just look up and down at the Giants roster, and I just see hole after hole after hole. They're going to be in contention for the number one pick this year. I think between them and Atlanta, they're looking at the two worst teams in the NFC. I hate that number. It was the one, 150, uh, 155. I hate that, but I still got to take it. They can't win seven and a half games. Yeah, it's, it's expensive, man, but it's probably the right play. Um, Dable probably shit that offense up, and they'll have some weapons, but they, they still need, like you I call it, a, uh, a gap year, a bridge gap to um, really get into contention. Uh, so as far as the NFC East, we already gave out the uh, underdog favorite, I guess, is what you would call it, to win that division. Well, yeah, if you're plus 185, you're an underdog, um, especially if you're not the defending champion. Um, actually, as far as division standings go, Philadelphia, Washington, Dallas, Giants, that's what I like. So we're wrapping up the NFC East with your uh, Philadelphia Eagles taking that division at plus 185, and we're going to head north. Uh, to the NFC North, and we will start uh, with the team that has the reigning uh, MVP. The two-time reigning MVP. Two-time reigning MVP. Two-time. And they're going to be so good this year. They're going to be so good this year. They have so many weapons. they got the, the uh, reigning two-time MVP. They're solid. Their coaching staff. Uh, I mean, you're going to have Devontae Adams. Uh, Raiders? Um, MVS. Uh, uh, Chiefs. Wait, wait. Rogers is going to be able to throw it to like Jordan Love. Uh, no, Jordan Love also plays quarterback. Uh, Crosby. Crosby, I don't think his uh, scouting report came out too good on his hands, but he's got good feet. Uh, they but they drafted well, right? Like the Packers drafted really well to help Aaron Rodgers out, right? I mean, he could throw it to Walker, right? Uh, plays linebacker or defensive line. Uh, Wyatt. Wyatt also plays defensive line. 
Uh, Christian Watson. Okay, second round wide receiver. He's going to throw Christian Watson. <laughs> they're going to turn it up this year. I don't know what. So, listen. I am I am very, 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 very high on Aaron Rodgers. I love the guy. I love his swag. I love his demeanor. Um, shout out to uh, the Pat McAfee show. I love the Tuesdays, the Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays. Uh, I loved him on Jeopardy as a host and on a contest as a contestant. He should have retired, man. He should have hung it up. There's there, he's not in a position to help a team rebuild. They didn't draft to help him out. He honestly has two weapons coming back around in my eyes with uh, Randall Cobb and Rob Tunyon. Definitely pick Rob. I mean, and and sidebar, uh, every time we mention fantasy players, we end up going with tight ends. It's a weird coincidence. I keep doing it on accident. I think we might have mentioned pick up JT um, from the Colts as your top running back unless you're playing PPR. Other than that, it's all been tight end conversation. But nevertheless, big Bob Tunyon, definitely pick him up early as one of your tight ends because – he has chemistry with Rodgers. Uh, Randall Cobb, if you can get on the field, he's like 107 years old. He's a Kentucky guy. You all don't slander about Kentucky on this podcast. But nevertheless, they did not set Rodgers up to succeed this year. I think he should have hung it up last year. What do you got, Pete? Uh, that is a hot take. A two-time defending MVP uh, to be suggested to retire. You know, Obviously, he still has the talent, so that's not what we're talking about here. But uh, speaking of Christian Watson being a second-round pick, so too is Randall Cobb. So, too, was Devontae Adams. Um, Christian Watson, if you're in a dynasty league, that's a guy I want. Those Green Bay wide receivers, they don't get him in the first round. Uh, actually, I, here's a trivia question for you. I already, I already got the wrong answer. Uh, it's okay. This is just more rhetorical. Uh, Aaron Rodgers has completed a touchdown pass in his NFL career to only one first-round pick. And who might that be? It is actually a tight end. We're back on the tight ends. Mercedes Lewis, who was a long ago first round pick of the Jaguars. I was gonna say Lewis, but you didn't give me a chance to answer, so Well, we already knew you knew it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh the Packers. Every year it seems like they might take a step back, and every year they don't, because Aaron Rodgers is one of those rare special quarterbacks who can by himself carry a team. They have won 13 games for three straight seasons. And they were 13-3 and three in all of those seasons. Last season, they lost Week 18 to fall to 13-4. and four. They have won 13 of their first 16 every year. What might be different this year? We do like the Vikings a little bit more than they have performed. Uh, spoiler alert first, Pete. You're supposed to say spoiler alert, but I love the Vikings. This year. <laughs> oh, I love the Vikings. We think the Lions might be more improved. And there's another team in the division, too. I don't want to worry about that right now. Probably uh, <laughs> another spoiler alert, worst helmets in uh, the helmet reveal. I like them a little bit, but I see why people wouldn't. I'm a, I'm a bit easy to please. But uh, that all that said, you got the same money here. It's 11 wins over under, and it's minus 110 on both. Packers, 12 wins. Sounds right. Um, 11 sounds right. 10 sounds low. If I got to pick one, I'm going over. So um, I, I came out hot on the Washington, and I ended up agreeing with you. Uh, I just wanted to dismantle their team for a minute because everything about that situation is funny, and it all ties together. As far as the Packers, was a little parody, was a little bit of a bit coming out on them too. I do love Aaron Rodgers. I cannot get on board. I don't, I don't know who he's going to throw it to. Um, I know they'll figure some stuff out. They got time. The total's at 11. I got him at 9, maybe 10. I don't have him winning the NFC more if I'm going to go under. Yeah, they did pick up Sammy Watkins. He's not going to set the world on fire, but you never know. That guy might be an all-pro just because Aaron Rodgers is throwing the ball. So uh, we're, we're split on that team total. We're going to move over to uh, the Minnesota Vikings uh, with new head coach Kevin O'Connell, uh, the OC coming out of LA, correct? Yes, sir. When I say LA, I mean the only team that really counts in LA, the Rams, right? The, the team that won the Super Bowl last year, sadly, the Rams. Um, so, new head coach, um, offensive minded guy. I'm very, very high on, uh, I've mentioned this 100 times and I mentioned it 100 more. I think that the NFL is going to be based, uh, is going to be points based. You got to score points. Uh, to win games, you're not going to get any. Uh, you got one with the Bills last year. You're not going to get many ten to six games, and you're not going to be able to ride that train. I think you have to score points. 
I think the Vikings are in position to score points. They have a ton of weapons, a ton of talent, uh, an offensive-minded coach. I think uh, the Bears are not going to be great. The Lions aren't going to be great. Uh, we're not on the same page as far as the Packers, but I don't think they're going to be as great as they have been. I'm very, very high on the Vikings. Uh, their team total is set at nine. Pete, what do you got? I do like the Vikings this year, and I think most Viking fans will tell you they like Mike Zimmer, the previous head coach, but he didn't have that ability to push them over the top offensively. So bringing in Kevin O'Connell was the natural replacement for him. And if you take a look at the uh, losses and additions that the Vikings have made this year, it would look like a net negative because of the the vast number of names on that list as compared to their additions. But none of those guys are are going to be missed too badly. I'm not trying to diss their abilities, of course, but the way the Vikings are, are looking this season, they're not needing those guys. And they did add someone like Harrison Phillips in the middle of the line and Jordan Hicks in the second level of defense. Solid, solid players. They're going to help keep, um, help get the other uh, team's offense off the field and put it in the hands of a Kirk Cousins led offense. Kirk Cousins is one of those guys that gets a bum rap. I think he puts up excellent numbers. He's got people to throw it to. He's got people to hand it off to. If that offensive line can come together, that nine over should be easy. So, Cousins does get a bum rap, and the nickname, Primetime Kirk Cousins, uh, has been following him, and it, it's been a ton of negativity around it. And it, it is true. You know, you get that Monday night, Sunday night, Thursday night game, and he he, he can't perform under the lights. Um as an overall career quarterback, I think that there's a line between superstar and subpar. And I think Kirk Cousins is that line. I think he is the bar. And if you could just take one step up and just manage the game a little bit better, I think he would make that leap to superstar. And it's ironic. His uh, primetime numbers aren't too dissimilar from his regular Daytime numbers. The team, the team, I don't know, uh, daytime soap opera, nighttime soap opera. The team doesn't win as much. And this is where ascribing wins and losses to the quarterback becomes deceptive. And it's a thing I've never liked. Uh, quarterback can play excellently and the team loses. It's the quarterback's fault. The quarterback plays poorly and they win. Yay, quarterback. I just, I'm not buying it. And then, uh, Kirk Cousins' efficiency numbers rank up there with anyone else in the league. He's not a wow player. He's not spectacular. He's not at what I like to call the Mahomes, Rodgers, Allen level. But he doesn't need to be. Hand the ball off to Dalvin Cook. Find you Justin Jefferson. Find you some Adam Thielen. Try to be protected. That Again, one area where I'm a little concerned about Minnesota is the offensive line. If they stay healthy and if they improve, it shouldn't be a problem. But those are a couple of big ifs. All that said, over the nine, yeah, I like it. Yeah, so the, the total is uh, nine at minus 134 if you want to pay the juice for the over. I love the over. I think they're going to score points. Um, all that said, White Claw for Thielen, all-time nickname. Um, <laughs> that is a good nickname. It's, it's awesome. It's it's top, top-tier top nickname. Um, so I don't want to get too many spoilers. I think everybody knows uh, where we're going with uh, NFC North. As far as the division winner, um, Vikings at plus 275. Um, I'm definitely not paying the 182 for the Packers. Neither am I. Not very high on them. Um, I love the Vikings at plus 275 to win the NFC North. I think it's theirs to lose. It's not. It, it, it's one thing to look at that line and say, okay, Packers are minus 182 and the Vikings are plus 275. Just because of the juice I'm getting back, I want Minnesota. That's one thing. But to believe they can actually win the division, which we both do, to believe that it's actually a very good chance they can win the division, then that's actually a great play. So I'm not, I think their win totals can be very similar and it might come down to something like a tiebreaker. But because I like Minnesota as much as I do, plus 275 to win the division is the play. All right, so we're uh, off to the uh, Windy City. Uh, we're going to talk about the Chicago Bears. Uh, not a lot because there's not a lot to talk about. Uh, I did say earlier they revealed their helmets. Um, very, very low on their helmets. They look 
ridiculous. I hate them. Um, they're traditional helmets. They should just stick with them. They're doing too much right now with, with their uniforms. And let's see how it looks on the field. It's a one-time thing, maybe. So, uh, with the Chicago Bears, uh, obviously they lost Khalil Mack. We talked about him uh, in addition to the Chargers. Uh, Justin Fields is a name. Uh, he, he's a name. You know, he performed in, in college well. He hasn't performed um, in the NFL as of yet. They do have a new um, head coach. You want to tell me about him, Pete? Matt Eberflus came from the uh, Indianapolis Colts. You nailed it! Say it again. Say it again. Eberflus. Oh. Eberflus. Eberflus. We're sticking with it. I don't have uh, many disabilities, I don't believe. I'm going to acknowledge to the public. <laughs> but here's one thing I'm awful at. You can tell me a pronunciation of anything, even a name, whatever. And I can hear it. It can go through the ear canal to the brain. And when it comes back out filtered, it's butchered. I, I don't know what, what's going on with me. But nevertheless... Uh, say the name again for me. Matt Eberflus. Hopefully he could be uh, what Chicago needs to turn around. Uh, I'm not a believer. Uh, just a little personal history. I picked up Montgomery after everybody on the Browns got hurt last year uh, as a savior running back, and uh, that did not work out for me at all. Uh, Eberflus, who knows if he's going to be a good head coach. It's one of them um, reverse Situations where the NFL is looking to hire offensive-minded head coaches. Chicago, being Chicago, hired a defensive-minded guy. Justin Field is representative of what used to be the case of USC quarterbacks. Outside of Carson Palmer, who was there right before they really, really blew up. These guys, when they come in, they're surrounded by so much talent. When they make the jump to the NFL, and the talent level is a little bit more even... They don't adjust well. I think in three years, we're talking about Justin Fields as a bust. I support it. I mean, like I said, I, he's a name. I mean, he's, but that's all he is right now. You know, he, he, you can make the argument that the game plan wasn't built around him last year. Um, new GM, new head coach. We can, we can wait and see. The roster uh, is, is a shit show. I mean, there's just nothing. Nothing out there that convinced me they're going to be great. Um, their team totals at six and a half. It's very, very, very juiced up. You're looking at uh, mass one forty one to take the under. I don't think the NFC North is going to be uh, a tough division by any means. You'll still have the Packers beating who they're supposed to beat. You have the Vikings much improved. Uh, we'll talk about the Lions in a second. Even at six and a half with a soft division, uh, I still don't think that. The Bears get the seven. I like the under one forty one. And you're talking about the roster, and we're talking about Phil Mack. That was their best player, and they traded him for a second round pick and another late round pick. Uh, they lost a guy like Akeem Hicks, who's been a glue guy in the middle of the field for them, in the middle of their defensive line. He hasn't performed a whole lot, a lot in the last season. But Allen Robinson, and look at the teams these guys are going to. Khalil Mack's going to the Chargers. Akeem Hicks went to the Bucks. Alan Robinson to the Rams. These are all teams that are going to be in the playoffs or at the very least knocking on the door. And and the Bears are getting rid of them. It, it, it's kind of crazy. A 6-11 and 11 Bears team would surprise me. As in, as if, uh, to say that that's more wins than I think they would get. It's, it's terrible that you have to sit there and look at these lines and say one of them is such a bad negative number and one's a positive number. But I'm not going to take the over... Just because I'm getting dues in my favor, if I don't think it can happen, a six and eleven Bears team will be overachieving. I think they're five and twelve, four and thirteen level. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. There's nothing really to talk about with the Bears. Give them a year or two with their new head coach, and we'll we'll see what happens. Um, and that brings us to the Detroit Lions. Um, Going to be your hard knocks team this year, and here's my biggest fear going into the NFL season. I know what Detroit is. I know who the Lions are. I know they're better. I know I love Dan Campbell. When they're on hard knocks, I'm scared to death. I'm going to fall in love with them and think that they're going to be better than what they are and stop betting on them. And I'm just going to light money on fire. That could be a concern. Um, I think most of us like Dan Campbell. I think a football fan needs to like Dan Campbell. Maybe not necessarily think he's a good coach. But to just like the dude and just like the way he presents himself. He's clearly a football guy. 
a blue collar type, Detroit being a blue collar city. Um, it's a good match. And they, um, they won three games last year. But did they look like a three win team? I think they looked better than that despite the fact that they only won three games. So I had the game, uh, what, the Thanksgiving game, where Swift got hurt. Am I correct? Fact-checking glasses? That sounds right. Okay, so I had that game. Um, and, and him getting hurt was huge. Uh, they got Goff at quarterback. Uh, I, I think he's one of those um, situations where if he's surrounded by the right talent, he can succeed. Uh, but he's not going to be the Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady guy that can get you over the hump. He's not going to lead you to a ton of victories. Um, their big pickup, shout out, Josh Pascal out of Kentucky, stud, love that kid. Um, Hawkerson, we're just going to just only talk about tight ends as far as fans. <laughs> uh, he, I mean, uh, he's got, he's got an awesome NFL name, Hawkerson. It's also Hawkinson. Yeah, that's why I said Haw- <laughs> Hawkerson. Um, but nevertheless, I just don't think he's going to be very high. <laughs> it's Hawkerson. <laughs> it's Hawkinson. <laughs> Who's on first? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Hawkinson or Hawkerson, either <laughs> one, are going to uh, get you a ton of points in fantasy. Um, he's going to be high up on everybody's board because really, golf doesn't have too many options to go to. I still love Swift. Um, he, like I said, he got hurt last year. Uh, tell me a little bit more about him outside of Josh Pascal probably being the best player on the team. Last year. <laughs> Josh Pascal was a good value in the second round again. And, uh, they did draft Jameson Williams as well. Coming off the uh, ACL tear, uh, he should be ready at some point during the season. I agree that Jared Goff is not on the Aaron Rodgers level. Absolutely. He's not going to go out there and win games by himself. I only think Mahomes, Rodgers, and Allen can do that in the NFL. He just needs to not turn the ball over. They have a good pair of running backs back there, DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams. Their offensive line is under the radar really good. They got an absolute monster in Penny Sewell. They got a center coming back, Frank Ragnall, from injury. They have an all-time great name of wide receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown, who, who I uh, yeah, that's a great name. Who, his brother is Equinemius St. Brown. That's what that family knows how to name their kids, yo. And um, Lions to the Super Bowl. I'm so Lions to the Super Bowl. I didn't, even take, I didn't even take Hard Knocks. I thought Hard Knocks was going to get me there. You just got me there with that last name. And I compared this year's. Houston Texans team to what we saw last year out of Detroit. That hard-nosed type play, leave it on the field, stay in games longer than you really deserve to, coming up short. I think that transitions Detroit this season into a much better team. The, what do we got? Six and a half six on Detroit? A, yeah, six and a half, and you're getting even money. Give, give me the over. Give me the over on Detroit. See, this is – this is I told you this is my biggest fear because now you're selling me on them. Okay, I wasn't convinced. I love Dan Campbell. I wasn't convinced. Okay? Um, I thought Hard Knocks was going to really, really – like I was going to be sitting there on a Wednesday night watching Hard Knocks. Like, God, man, I would, Dan Campbell bite their knees, you know? <laughs> I thought that was going to do it, and, and here we are, and you're selling me on them, and I, I can't disagree with you. Give me the over six and a half, two, and please, Lions, just win seven. Just win seven. Just win seven. Yeah. Just, and, and if Josh Pascoe is the MVP of the NFL season, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. And if Hawker Smith or Hawkins Smith <laughs> give me a couple of touchdowns to win the game, uh, they could be co-MVPs. I'm good with that, too. Uh, I think Lions fans would be satisfied at 7-10. and 10. So, you know, you're not upsetting the NFL balance. You're making your fans happy. You're putting putting money in betters' pockets. Win seven games. So, all right, uh, we wrapped up uh, NFC, first half of the NFC, season one, episode 30. Do you have anything else for us, Pete? Again, I want to reiterate, I like Minnesota as the division champion, and I like Philadelphia as the division champion. That would be two new winners knocking off your NFL royalty in the Packers and Cowboys. And and there's nothing wrong with that. If you're a honey mustard guy and you go Chick-fil-A sauce, and you're like, well, they're kind of similar. They really (laughs) are. And I really enjoy this Chick-fil-A sauce. But it's fine because there's so many condiments to choose from, just like the NFC. Callback. Um, Can we end this episode with a skull chant? Because I feel like skull. 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 I guess I got to do this. Skull. 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 Don't forget, guys, uh, we are on YouTube. If that's probably where you're watching us. Uh, social media, pineapples don't go on pizza at the Joshua Sharp. That is a fact. I am dropping daily picks. Uh, me and Pete are collabing on everything that you hear out of my videos. 
Um, we're posted, I think we're at five winning weeks uh, in a row. It's been a good run. If you're paying attention, you're doing all right. And it's insane because as far as handicapping, nobody, I don't think anybody has a uh, wide uh, palette as far as handicapping. I think everybody has their specific spots. Ours in the NFL, obviously. Baseball has been good to us this season. Baseball has uh, proven itself somewhat breakable. Somewhat. It's still a tough one to bet, but we are, instead of just trying to break the whole thing down, we're finding our little nooks and crannies. It just takes one one game a day, go your way, your positive units at the end of the week. We're posting five uh, weeks in a row, maybe going on six weeks in a row of positive units, man. Uh, make sure you follow along. Pineapples don't go on pizza because that is a fact. At the Joshua Sharp on Twitter because that is also a fact. Um, hashtag job cross 65 to five is anywhere. Pete, great show, man. NFC uh, round two coming up next week. Love that had a good time. Want to definitely take the opportunity to thank everybody who has joined us. We hope to bring you knowledge and to entertain. We are a bit goofy at times and uh, we're proud of that. And we're looking forward to finishing off the NFC in the next episode. All right, guys, uh, follow along. Good luck, everybody.